I've mentioned many times how heartbroken I am by the collapse of diversity that I've seen here on this land just in the 22 years I've lived here. That the latest heartbreak is this winter I have seen three banana slugs and even five, six years ago, I would see 20, 30 a day and at least. And when I first moved here, uh, if I lifted up a piece of wood or lifted up anything, there would be a half dozen slugs under it and a couple of rough skin newts. And the rough skin newts disappeared in four or five years after I got here. And I would still see several rough skin newts at a time sometimes. And old timers would say that in the 70s, they used to see hundreds of rough skin newts at a time. And they would be up in some stream in the, in the mountains and just the, the, a pond would be just swimming with rough skin newts. And I've, I've read stories and also talked to people who did this, who would put their feet in the water and all the rough skin newts would come up and like, what's the word, exfoliate? Is, is that the word where, where they're eating off little pieces of dead skin? They would come up and chew on their toes. And um, anyway, when I first moved here 22 years ago, there would be, uh, in the winter, there would be clumps of daddy long legs, harvestmen, that would be the size of a dinner plate and maybe this thick. Not individuals, this is like a clump of hundreds of them. And I see one a year now. And it's just, you know, heartbreaking. Um, the collapse that we see. And I keep thinking that the collapse is accelerating. And there's a sense in which it is. But I think it's just that I have my baseline of when I moved here. And we all have our baselines of what nature was like when we we're kids. And of course, we never want to go back to where we grew up because it's now a shopping mall or it's, you know, that there was, there was abundant wildlife perhaps if we lived in the country and now there may not be. And so there's a, a sense in my, in my head that in my memory or in my mind that this is accelerating. And again, it is, but I think there's another sense in which somebody who lived in my mother's generation was just as appalled by what happened every 20 years. I've mentioned this before that my mother's grandmother grew up on a sod house on the Nebraska Prairie. And when she was a little girl, um, every time there would be thunder or lightning, she would get scared because she was afraid the buffalo would stampede and run over the top of their house and collapse it. Who today is afraid that buffalo will stampede and collapse their house? And so we have, I'm sure she felt the same, and she never mentioned this that I know of, but the greatest amassing of animal life that anybody has ever written was a, an American locust swarm in I think the 1870s that went from Oklahoma all the way up to Nebraska. And the American locust was extinct by somewhere around 1910. I could be off by 10, 15 years because of plowing. And so somebody who lived from 1870 to 1930 could tell these same stories. When I was young, I remember the locusts. When I was young, I remember the buffalo. And somebody on the East Coast could say, when I was young, I remember the passenger pigeons. I remember the Eskimo curlews. And somebody in this area, in the 1930s, um, the Klamath, which is the second biggest river on the West Coast, um, on the West Coast of the United States, um, after the Columbia, uh, they said it was, quote, black and roiling with salmon. And my point is that 
yes, things are accelerating, but when you have a culture that's based on systematically converting the the living planet into machines and into this industrial, into products for this industrial system, no matter when you live, whether it's 500 years ago, from the beginnings of this culture till now, you will have the same story of loss. You will have the story of when I was a kid, I've said this before, prior to conquest, if you were near water in California, you would see a grizzly bear every 15 minutes. So the last grizzly bear was killed in California, I think 1910. So somebody who lived from 1880 to 1920 could say, I remember 40 years ago when there were a lot of grizzly bears. And I mean, heck, in the last 10 years, yeah, last 15 years, I remember when there were a lot of starfish in the tidal pools. And my point is this loss, we think that this is the worst, but I have no doubt that for the last 6,000, 8,000 years, anybody at the epicenter of this, at the East Coast, they would say, gosh, do you remember when there were wood bison running through these forests? Do you remember when there were wolves here? Do you remember when? It's nothing but an endless parade of grief and loss for anybody who's paying attention.